going to kick off with the first race today. It is going to be Benjamin Daly, TMF Mardu, a F1 YouTuber versus David Schumacher. And it looks like Schumacher has got the lead for the time being, going through turn one and turn two. And then you've got the long run down in towards turn four. So Benjamin Daly, TMF Mardu is going to be right on the back of David Schumacher going down in towards turn four. He's having a look around the outside. This is, of course, an F1 YouTuber, plays this game daily. Uh, you know, pardon the pun, his name is Benjamin Daly, but he is playing it daily and he has got 400,000 YouTube subscribers. He's going up against David Schumacher as they go side by side into the turn five, into towards turn six. Still wheel to wheel between the two, but this is fantastic racing as Schumacher goes a little bit deep on the brakes. Team Ed Mardu comes through, but there is still a chance for Schumacher to get him back on the run down towards the line. Of course, David Schumacher is the nephew of Michael Schumacher, son of Ralph Schumacher, and will hopefully be competing in F3 this year, but he has a lot of work left to do. The gap is five tenths of a second. No DRS is activated, and if you do not win this round, you will not progress to the quarterfinals. TMF Marduk holding it down for the time being. David Schumacher, is he in that slipstream? Is he in that toe? I don't think it's gonna be enough, and it looks like TMF Marduk is gonna take the first race win of this evening. That was quite a nice battle between the two of them. Yeah, there we go. Off the grid they go. Archie Hamilton flies off the line. Chris Lake doesn't get away well at all. And the Mercedes driver will lead down into the centre. S and Chris Lake has gone off already. And I think that might be that already as Archie Hamilton makes his way through the centre S and down through turn three. And surely now it's just a case of keeping it on the island. And he should have this one in the bag. Chris Lake getting it all wrong into that first corner. And Archie Hamilton just has got to take it easy, bring it home. And uh, he should be safe and through into the quarterfinals, where, of course, he would meet Benjamin Daly. But it's not there yet. He needs to keep it on the island as he makes his way up the hill through turn five and turn six. And then into the tight, twisty section where we saw Schumacher lock up uh, in the previous heat. So Archie Hamilton just taking it easy. Certainly a lot slower pace this one compared to the last race and not as much drama as he now makes his way up through Pico de Pato and down the hill towards the final part of the lap. Chris Lake. He'll be ruining that error. Didn't get away, away well off the line and immediately tried to make up for lost time. Ran wide off the track onto the grass and it was all over from then on. So here comes Archie Hamilton through Jean So up the hill and up towards the line and he will make his way through into the quarterfinals. Up to the line comes the Mercedes and that one was easy enough. Chris Lake, interestingly, reeling him in towards the end of that there. So Hayden, a case of what might have been for Chris. It's going on now. Here we go. Five red lights between the two of them. Ian versus Arava. Who's going to come out on top? It looks like Arava has got the better start. He's in the Ferrari with Ian Poulter, the golfer in the Mercedes. Arava's got the job done at the moment down towards turn one. Ian Poulter not doing a Chris Lake, but he has lost the back end out of turn one there. And that looks like it could be an easy victory for Arava in round three of the round of 16 Ooh. at the moment. Arava, though, he just has to keep it clean. Ian Poulter could catch up if Arava makes the same sort of mistake. You've got to think for Arava, though, um, he would rarely would make a mistake like that because he is, of course, uh, an F1 content creator, plays this game quite a lot, is used to the physics and the driving style that you need to get one of these cars around this track quickly. Ian Poulter, though, will be looking to try and just keep it clean. You know, just try and make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes and hope and bet on a mistake from Arava. Of course, oh, look, there he goes. Ian Poulter, oh. unfortunately, makes another mistake. That's a very, very unfortunate for him. It looks like it's going to be an easy victory for Arava at the moment. Of course, if you are enjoying what you are seeing at the moment, we've got plenty of races to come uh, throughout the rest of the night. Don't forget to check out the Veloce Esports YouTube channel after this because we have a lot of F1 content on there, uh, including lots more races like this one. Arava takes the win, though. He is round. He is through to the quarterfinals, and there we go. An easy victory for uh, Arava. And unfortunate, though, for Ian Poulter there. We'll find out just how strong he is as the five red lights go on. And we are racing in the third heat. The fourth heat, sorry. And away we go. Artem Markov and Latifi. Latifi looks like he's got the run and got the lead into the first corner. Can Markov fight back as they swoop down through the centre S and on to turn three. Markov in the slipstream in that Mercedes needs to get tucked right up behind Latifi. The Canadian goes defensive to the inside as they reach Decido de Lago. Markov has a little look up the inside, but he's unable to go through. But Latifi goes very, very wide. And now as they go up towards turn five and six, Markov is now right behind him. Through there they go. Latifi still holding on. Markov a little bit wide through there. And Latifi gains a bit of time. The pressure off. 
and neither of them make the mistake we've oh. seen. Oh, oh, spoke too soon. Commentators cast. Round goes Markelov into his spin, and that should hand Latifi a place in the quarterfinals, Hayden. Big spin there. Nicholas Latifi is our fourth driver through to the quarterfinals. He will take on Arava in the quarterfinals. So we've got a very interesting quarterfinals ahead of us. Here we go in Brazil. It's Lando Norris in the bright orange McLaren up against Sasha Fenestras in the silver Mercedes. And it looks like Sasha might have got a better start. They're side by side as they go down in towards turn one. But Lando gets the inside through turn one. Sasha having to hold on, but he gets the inside line through turn two. Still wheel to wheel. What a battle between the two of them in the opening couple of corners. And now Sasha Fenestras is going to be following Lando all the way down in towards turn four. Lando goes defensive. Sasha has to go the long way around he can't do it so far and Lando holding position loses the back end ever so slightly but just about holds on ahead of Sasha Fenestras who now goes around the outside Lando though breaking earlier and actually giving the position to Sasha who now takes the lead over the orange McLaren but breaks very deep into the next corner it is very tight between the two of those two of these Lando giving Sasha a little love lap as they go that corner there now Lando trying to maximize his exit off this corner try and line up Sasha Fenestras all the way down towards the start finish rate here goes Lando Norris he need a good break he goes up the inside a late move from Lando Norris it looks like he's got the job done Sasha Fenestras getting hung out to dry and he's off the track and it looks like Lando Norris is going to take the race win and move himself into the quarterfinals. I'm not too sure about that move, whether it was controversial or not. It looked like he had got the job done. Maybe Sasha just dropped it on the exit. We'll have to maybe get the race stewards involved, but a cracking battle. It's an unknown quantity, but we're going to have to wait and see as the five red lights come on as well, and he leads them off the line on the rundown of the turn one, and Jimmy, whoa, the back end sliding like crazy there. Actually, they make their way into the first corner. Well, and he gets it through the first corner and is in control as things stand. So he's kept it tidy. Jamie, not so, so far, as they make their way through uh, Cover de Sol and down the retroposta towards uh, Desiro de Lago. And it looks like Willany has got this one so far. One and a half seconds between them. And as long as Willany keeps it tidy, he should have this one in the bag and should make his way through into the quarterfinals then. So up through five and six they go into the middle part of the lap. Can Jamie try and claw some of that time back? Locking up, losing the rear there. In desperation, trying to catch Willany. I tell you what, she's not lost too much time at all, and she really has to wrestle that Williams car. So one and a half seconds between them, and it looks like Willany keeping it clean and tidy Aww. is going to get the job done. Jamie Chadwick just a little bit too impatient on the throttle, and Willany, who's just kept things under control, nice and clean, nice and tidy, is surely going to come home and earn a place in the quarterfinals. Down the hill comes that. Uh, bright orange McLaren and up towards the line well and he takes his place in the quarterfinals this is insane but this is what it's all about here we go the five lights are on and we are underway here in Brazil Esteban Gutierrez in the silver Mercedes with Thibaut Courtois in the bright orange McLaren Esteban gets the much better start on the run down in towards turn one but Thibaut Courtois is hot on his heels through turn three they go right on the back now of Esteban Gutierrez. He's dropped off a little bit, but he will get back in that slipstream and follow him all the way down in towards turn four. He is gaining massively on Esteban Gutierrez. Very late on the brakes compared to the Mercedes driver. Uh, and unfortunately for uh, Thibaut Courtois, just can't quite make the move. He's not close enough yet, but there is still a long way left to go in this lap. The gap between the two of them, two tenths of a second. The Real Madrid uh, number one goalkeeper touches with Esteban Gutierrez. He just about manages to hold on. Gutierrez breaking a little bit earlier for court pass lighting, but it was a great save, which you always, which you usually see from across a Real Madrid goalkeeper, as Thibaut Courtois gets it on the grass, but he couldn't save that one, it's gone in the top corner, and Thibaut Courtois looks to have lost this matchup against Esteban Gutierrez, unfortunately, as Gutierrez only has to try and make it home, Andy, and it should be fairly easy for him to progress into the quarterfinals. It was such a close battle, but unfortunately, it just got away from Thibaut, didn't it? Yeah, it's Stoffel versus Jay. The five red lights go out, and it is Jay that crucially leads them off the line. So the pressure straight away on the Formula E man and former Formula One driver. So Jay then, the unknown quantity in this race. Oh, he's oh. got a little bit wide, and Stoffel slingshots through the centre S and charges through up into the lead between the two already. Look at Stoffel weaving from left to right, trying to break <laughs> that toe. And at the end of that first sector, he is ahead of Jay, and Jay almost running into the back of the Mercedes there. He really is a charging bull. 
really desperate to get through but unable to do it and Stoffel now has a solid not comfortable six second gap uh, uh, six seconds six tenths gap as they go through turn six so Jay under pressure will he make mistakes will he overdrive it not so so far he's keeping all of his eggs in the one basket potentially for that final chance over the start finish line but it looks like Stoffel is extending the gap further saying that I think he was a little bit wide there coming out of Pico de Pato but I think he should have this one in the bag around a second between them at the foot of the hill and now Stoffel van Dorn should be home and dry he should be safe as he makes his way swooping down the hill up to the line and Stoffel van Dorn joins the rest in the quarterfinals in the Veloci versus. Yeah, here's the bracket for you once again, uh, so you guys can see how everyone is progressing at the moment for the finals. You've got Team Marduk versus Archie Hamilton, Arava versus Latifi, Lando Norris will take on the YouTube content creator of Will and E, with Esteban Gutierrez and Stoffel Van Dorn being our final race of these quarterfinals. Well, it looks like we're going to find out straight away as the lights are coming on. It's Team M Marduk versus Archie Hamilton, and it's lights out, and we are off. Archie Hamilton in the red Ferrari with Team M Marduk in the bright silver Mercedes. Looks like Team M Marduk has got off to a fantastic start as they go down in towards turn one. Late on the brakes, Archie Hamilton taking a nice line through there. Can he keep it clean and try and get to the back of Team M Marduk? It looks like he's sort of run off into the distance with this one. 1.7 seconds, 1.92 seconds is the gap between these two as we run down into the second chicane through the curve of Grande and uh, there we go as uh, Team at Marduk climbs over the curbs there not really losing too much time though pulling out a massive gap over Archie Hamilton it looks like it's going to be a commanding victory for Team at Marduk but we're only halfway through the lap he can easily make a mistake around here Ascari is going to be a very difficult corner to get through and you can easily get your, uh, your your lap invalidated if you come to track a little bit too much but it looks like Timo Marduk has got through there okay he is on the run down now into the final corner and it looks <laughs> like he should take the victory here look at him weaving down the straight really putting it in the face of Archie Hamilton it's been a breeze for Timo Marduk to take the victory and move himself into the semi-final. Will it all come back to haunt him? No, it won't. It looks like, oh, he was baiting <laughs> us coming into the pits, but uh, there he goes, comes across the line, and it's a race win, an easy race win for Tiamat Marduk as he does some donuts to celebrate there. Really <laughs> collides with Archie Hamilton. But well, that's just going to be a meaty one. The five red lights go out, and Arava doesn't get away well. Is it going to be another sore one for the Tifosi on home soil? Nicholas Latifi storms into the lead as they go down into that first chicane. Arava breaking very late. Again, the pressure telling you're so desperate to try and make up lost ground immediately. Latifi really tidy through that first chicane as they now make their way through Cover Grande. Anava tucked up in the slipstream behind the Williams. Is he going to have a look down into the second chicane? Latifi defends the inside. The Canadian Anava round the outside he goes. Can he get it stopped? No, not quite. Able to sweep through and Latifi holds on and is that already game over? Out of a losing time there, eight tenths between them as they make their way through Lesmo number one and then Lesmo number two. Arava has got to throw the kitchen sink at the Ascari chicane. He's half a second behind, he's right in the slipstream and he's going to have a real opportunity perhaps into the Parabolica. Does Latifi play it cautious through here? Does that, Arava's got to go for it and he does go for it. He flew through there. Look at the gap, two and a half tenths. This could be the closest finish we've had so far. Latifi defending like crazy, moving to the right hand side. Arava into the Parabolica with all the backing of the Tifosi, trying to go right round the outside side of Nicholas Latifi, the Formula 1 driver, looks though like he's got the better of it as they reach to the line. Is it going to be a photo finish? Not quite. Nicholas Latifi holds on and that was absolutely fantastic stuff, Aiden. Who is going to come out on top? They're both in McLaren's, which is going to make it maybe a little bit difficult for us to sort of determine who is who, but we will do our best for you. Lando Norris gets off to a fantastic start and leads the way as Will and E tries to duck and dart to get round him. They're going side by side to go down in towards turn one. Who's going to break later? It's Will and E breaking later there than Lando Norris. He's up the inside on the exit of turn one and two, and it looks like he's got the job done for the time being. Will and E holding the lead. Can we have another surprise victory from Will and E? Lando is going to have to throw everything now into the rest of 
this circuit as he tries to claw back Will and E and tries to get the job done. We saw a fantastic overtake from Lando Norris on Sasha Fenestras right at the end. And it looks like Lando is now right on the back of Will and E as they go down in towards Lesmo 1. Here he goes. Nice tidy line there from uh, Lando Norris. Now in towards Lesmo 2. And again, nice and tidy. But no real opportunity to go for an overtake just yet. He might be able to go for it, though, down into the Ascari chicane. Will and E doesn't defend the inside line. Lando now up the inside, oh. down in towards the Ascari. They hold it side by side. Will has to go the long way round. Great driving between the two of them. Great respect between the two McLaren drivers. But Lando Norris gets the job done. Will there be a last-ditch attempt from Will and E to hold on to this competition? Lando Norris leaving to break that victory. Will and E's going to have to have a fantastic exit out of the Parabolica if he wants to get the job done. It doesn't look like it, though. Lando Norris is going to come down and cross the line and make his place in the semi-finals. Well done to Lando Norris there. But well done, of course, to Will and E to hold on against an F1 driver. What a race that was, Andy. Oh, too hard. This one is definitely too tough to call. I'm going to have to wait and see. Let's go then. Let's find out who can come out on top. Gutierrez versus Van Dorn, both from the Mercedes. And away we go. It's Gutierrez leading the Mexican the Mexican driver as they go down towards turn one. Stoffel Van Dorn tucks himself right into the slipstream. Is he going to go for a move into that first corner? No, he's not. Gutierrez locks up but reaches the apex. This is going to be so, so close. I feel this one's going to go right to the line. Here we go then, on board with Stoffel van Dorn, the Belgian driver, in Curva Grande. Gutierrez defends to the inside. Van Dorn's going to have to go the long way round. Thinks better of it. Gutierrez holds his line, and van Dorn will perhaps try and wait for Ascari, perhaps even wait for the Parabolica. They flash through the trees here at Monza, flashing through the first Lesmo, down towards the second. Stoffel van Dorn is right in the gearbox of Esteban Gutierrez. He's pushing him along. He's saying, get a move on. And now van Dorn has got a real opportunity as they go underneath the old circuit. Defending to the inside is Gutierrez. Van Dorn's going to try and go right round the outside again. He thinks better of it. He'll try and cut back on the exit. Almost side by side there, going through Ascari. And now it truly is a drag towards the line. One corner to go. Gutierrez holds firm. He is not getting Van Dorn that inside line. Van Dorn tries once, tries twice, gives him a little nudge, and they're going to be racing right to the flag. They touch wheels. <laughs> And I think Gutierrez is off. He's in a big moment. Huge spin. And into the gravel trap he goes. And Stoffel van Dorn crosses the line to win in a breathless race. But will that one go to the Stewart's Hayden? We're hearing that Stoffel van Dorn yep. has been disqualified. And Esteban Gutierrez goes through. And I think that's fair enough. I think... Uh, yeah, Stoffel tried that a little bit too hard again, a desperate manoeuvre, and just gave him that little nudge. And uh, in the end, Gutierrez goes through. So Stoffel van Dorn out of that one. And that is that then. So Stoffel goes, is, is, is that, out. Yeah. Gutierrez through.